Mark Smith managed to gauge what it is fairly quickly. He takes the spare tire out, cleans out, cleans out, but still the smell is there. And he said he came to training one time. You know those you know, those um uh magic tree uh smell smelling things. Do you have them yes, over there? Yes, uh-huh, yeah. He said it was like a forest in his car. He's got them all <laughs> up and down the side. <laughs> Just made me chuckle. Just made me chuckle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to A Very Special Relationship, the podcast that explains how to deal with a stupid government in no fewer than two accents. I'm your host, Andrea Bridges-Smith, and with me is Matt Johnston from The Interesting Times. Matt, how's everything going over there? Yeah, hi, Andrea. Yeah, everything's relatively fine over here. We're in the lull of the storm uh, at the moment, and then we're going to be feeling the, uh, you know, that whole wrath of God thing, apparently, in the weeks to come. (laughs) We are going to be dealing with snow and floods. There's going to be water everywhere. Apparently, it's a case of (laughs) H2O. Oh, dear. Well, remember that if it comes to it, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device, or at least that's what they tell you on the airplanes. Uh, And if you're in a really tough spot, you can call up the prime minister and have him bail you out. Uh, I heard that he made like 2.2 million pounds last year. I'm sure he's eager to spend that money on helping people. Yeah, and thank you for saying he made it rather than he earned it. Well, (laughs) here's the thing. If he wants to help people in the UK, then he knows what he needs to do. And the sooner, the better, right? (laughs) So he actually pays the same rate of tax as a teacher due to some questionable moralities around our not fit for purpose tax system. I mean, it is legal, by the way, just as I say, morally questionable. Yeah, yeah, there's a... Seems to be a lot of that with him. Uh, (laughs) And then, you know, you've got uh, Prince Harry, who also received a big payout in his phone hacking case against a British tabloid. Good news for him. His pockets, I'm sure, were starting to get a little light. (laughs) Yeah, he flew in to touch base with his dad, something like half an hour. Uh, I'm guessing after hearing about his dad's cancer prognosis. I'm generally not sure what's going on with that young man right now, but I hope he and his family find a bit of peace. Yeah. But it was kind of a bit of fun seeing him and Piers Morgan taking a few chunks out of each other. Now, for those <laughs> that don't know, Piers Morgan was due to have a date with Meghan Markle. Obviously, this is going back a fair few years. But right. she stood him up. And next thing you know, she's dating the prince. And apparently, <laughs> poor old Piers has never quite gotten over it. <laughs> well, I think she made the right choice there. Um, Piers, <laughs> uh, maybe you need to make like Elsa and let it go. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Matt, I know that you care as deeply as I do about the world of sport. Uh, so I wanted to Absolutely. let you know that the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl last night. Hooray! Yes, I know. We're all so excited. Uh, but even more importantly, I won big. Uh, so I went to a Super Bowl party and the host had kindly laid out a jigsaw puzzle for us non-sports fans to do. So I attacked that with the same ferocity that Travis Kelsey attacked his coach. Um, (laughs) Then we all placed bets on the game and there were cash prizes at the end of each quarter based on what the score was. And I won three of those four quarters all while ignoring the game, doing a jigsaw puzzle until the halftime show came on. Uh, I watched that. It was spectacular. All in all, a lovely evening for me and I assume for the Kansas City Chiefs uh, and, of course, for Joe Biden, whose plot to overthrow democracy via Taylor Swift's love life is nearly complete. Oh, go Joe. So question for you. Do you do the edges first or do you do the kind of uh, pick one part and then concentrate on that? I'm glad we're discussing this. This is way more important than the Super Bowl. Uh, I do generally like to do the edges first, uh, but I I won't always do that. Sometimes, depending on the puzzle, what I'll do is I'll I'll kind of go through the pieces and sort them. Like, okay, here's all the the blue sky pieces, and here's all the boat pieces, and here's all the flowers. You know that kind of thing. And then once yeah. I have a good pile going, I'll just work on that section, and then you know, kind of put them all together at the end. Um, and I think this is, it, it's important that we're discussing this. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to save the football stuff maybe for less time. This this is the critical stuff right now. <laughs> and have you heard of Wozniak's? No, what's that? 
Okay. My mum uh, does the jigsaw. She does loads of them. She absolutely loves them. They're usually sort of thousands sort of ones. She has a board laid out on her table and stuff. Invariably, when we go back to visit her, you know, there, there'll be one there. A was jig is basically not what's on the box. It's whatever is on the box is looking at. I'll okay. give you an example. Um, she loves the Christmas one. So last Christmas, she was doing this uh, Christmas before she was doing a was jig, which is basically Santa and all these reindeer looking in at Santa's workshop where all the elves were working, having this horrified look on their face. So you, what, you weren't doing that with the was jig. What you were making were what they were looking at, which all these elves making an absolute mess of Santa's workshop. That's a was jig. Interesting. That sounds really hard. So there's like no picture to go off of. Very hard. Anyway, wow. that's that's enough talk about the Super Bowl. So uh, yes. let's, uh, <laughs> you were talking about um, Joe Biden, weren't you? Yes, let's uh, let's get back to politics, you know, which is definitely more our wheelhouse than than the world of sport. Um, so uh, Joe Biden, you know, I'm, I'm joking about him uh, getting his wishes, but actually he's having a pretty bad time right now. Uh, so, you know, our economy is improving uh, after the last few years. Of course, there's been like a global economic downturn. Um, we're starting to come out of that now. Uh, we did not have the helpful assistance of a Liz Truss mm. uh, with, well, with our yeah. economy. So um, we were able to recover a little bit quicker. Uh, we didn't have the Trussian uh, economics. <laughs> that, that you guys Funny had. you should say that. Do you know that they, uh, all these supporters of Liz Truss, they're still out there. All these supporters are calling it Trussian economics, and they're saying that it's just this most wonderful thing. And why didn't they, we give her longer? <laughs> what, so she could lose another billion? No, thank you very much. <laughs> yes. So the I, I can only assume that Trussian economics is when the line just makes a sharp nosedive just very quickly. Like You're getting to land minutes. really quickly. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, well, we, we didn't have her. So our economy is doing better. Uh, people are starting to feel better about things. Um, but Joe Biden is not really getting any credit for that. Um, he is, of course, very old and he doesn't exactly exude the kind of youthful vigor of, say, a Vladimir Zelensky or even your own Dishy Rishi, you know, with all his faults. Uh, but he he's spry. You got to give him that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, to the point of looking like an excited, sort of excitable young boy, really. Uh, yes. Joe Biden would kill to uh, have some of that vim and vigor that Rishi's got. Um, because last week, this report came out saying, uh, you know, they they had uh, the classified documents case with Donald Trump, where they searched Mar-a-Lago and found that he had retained all these classified documents after he had said, no, no, I gave them all back. Um, so there's a, a case against him for that, one of the many. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, they, they did a search at his office and residence, and they did find a few classified documents there that were not properly secured. So they did an investigation, as they should. And mm. uh, this report came out saying that, yes, he had retained some classified documents, but he's not going to be charged with any crimes for it because he was just a forgetful old man. Uh, you know, he... When he when they interviewed him, he couldn't remember things, and you know he basically would be best suited to be in a nursing home with a blanket and a cup of tea, and you know one of the jigsaw puzzles um, that that we were discussing earlier. Uh, so this really pissed him off. He does not like it when people make a big deal about his age, and I'm curious if age is a big as big of a factor over there as it's becoming over here, because our Congress primarily made up of, you know, elderly white people. Um, but there seems to be this move now towards wanting younger people in office. Um, and yeah. the the presidency, you know, seems to be kind of getting that during the campaign. So is, is yeah. that as big of a deal over there? Well, the, I mean, the House of Laws is certainly older, but it's not as bad as I thought. There are actually... 784 members, but only 154 uh, over the age of 80. Okay. Uh, the only prime minister I can find that was in their 80s was uh, Gladstone, William Gladstone, and that was over a century ago. Okay. I beg your pardon. Uh, 
Churchill, I think, on his uh, second time in office, just hit 80. Oh, okay. uh, Sunak's 43. He was 42 when he came to office. Liz Truss was 47 when she came to office and 47 when she left office. Um, <laughs> Johnson Johnson was 55 and then 58 when he left office. Yeah, we tend to be fairly consistent with the mid 40s to late 50s range. Okay. One more thing, then I promise I won't sit here and go on, go on about age. Anyway, last September, uh, in the same week, my partner and I went to Devon to visit my mum, and we also caught the Eurostar to Paris, so it was a bit of a busy week. And I have to say, we were both exhausted. Now, we're both in our 50s, maybe not particularly healthy, but certainly not unhealthy, but that has to be one of the toughest part of Biden's routine, you know, all that traveling. So for him to be even up and about and not just like I'm pretty sure most people would just going, oh, I've had enough. Thank you very much. No, he's going, nope, four more years. I mean, fair play to him, really. Yeah, that's the thing that's interesting about this election is that both of the candidates are old. They're only within a few years of each other. You know, it's not like Donald Trump is some spring chicken. Uh, both <laughs> both of the candidates regularly make gaffes and mix things up a bit when they're talking. So you would think that would cancel each other out, but that issue is really staying at the forefront of people's minds. Um, you know, Trump hasn't announced a running mate yet. Uh, Biden has Kamala Harris and people aren't fond of her for all sorts of reasons. Uh, so there's not really this feeling of like, you know, ah, don't worry if this one kicks off, we've got plan B ready to go, you know? Feel free to quote me on this, but I feel like Trump's always had that where he makes those gaffes and mixes things up i mean that's just him he's an idiot young <laughs> idiot old idiot i mean he's just an idiot right i think the thing with biden isn't just cognitive processes but he also just looks really frail yeah he's not like getting around very well um there's there's this general feeling with him and it was there during the last presidential election too that no one really wants him no one is excited about him uh, he's not left enough for the left and the right think he's a communist because everything is a red scare to them. Uh, but, you know, he's kind of like the uncle that you only see at Christmas. He's pleasant enough over some ham and stuffing, but you're not coming over for game night in between. Uh, and the only reason that he's succeeded in, you know, getting the nomination is because Donald Trump is so bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, have you seen Trump's latest gaffe? where he says that any NATO <laughs> allies that are being uh, behind on their pavement, he's not only going to not go to their aid, he's also going to encourage whoever's attacking them to do whatever the hell they want, his words. I mean, that's that's a green light to Putin right there, isn't it? It is. I mean, Nikki Haley was talking about this after uh, he made these remarks at, at one of her events, and she said, this is what makes Joe Biden look sane. And she's absolutely right. The idea that this one man feels like he can just nullify agreements just mm. on a whim because it's Tuesday and he no longer feels like the Treaty of Ghent is worth it, you know, or uh, the Magna Carta, uh, never mm. liked it, sounds kind of foreign, let's get rid of it, you know, just these uh, human rights, we're, I'm not interested in doing those anymore, you know. This one man cannot just decide on a whim that, Treaties are null and void. That's just not how things work. You know, right. uh, this right. takes a lot of nerve. And then, you know, you mentioned Putin. I'm curious if you've seen any of this interview that Tucker Carlson did with uh, Vladimir Putin. I, I didn't, actually. I, I must be honest here and say that my block of flats actually backs up to a park. So I was actually busy sticking my head out the window and watching the grass grow. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, a much better use of your time. Um, yeah, I didn't watch the interview. Uh, I've only read about it because, you know, Putin and Tucker Carlson, those are two people that I'd like to interact with the least. Uh, Hitler's ghost, also near the top of that list. Uh, but one thing that I read about it said that at some point, Putin starts roasting Tucker Carlson and giving him shit for not being able to get into the CIA when he was younger. And I was like... Well done, Putin. And it's weird to want to high five Vlad because most days I don't. I don't know. The yeah. whole thing just, just has me feeling weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you know that uh, Putin actually started his KGB service in East Germany, as it was then, where he would befriend Westerners and effectively turn them against the West. He's very oh. good at it, apparently. And okay. putting him in with Carlson, who has no loyalty to anything, 
and right. seems to have a permanent expression like he smelt some off prawns. It, it's not a good combination. <laughs> I also see that Putin is claiming that Johnson stopped Ukraine getting a peace deal 18 months ago. Johnson has denied this and indeed called Putin a traitor. But it's come to something when I'm sat there with, on one hand, a man who doesn't have this country's best interests at heart, putting it mildly. Right. And on the other hand, the ex-prime minister and thinking what Putin said could be true. It's not so much unbelievable that one of them, one of these guys could be lying, but that one of them must be telling the truth. Yeah, because neither one of them are known for being uh, just a, a paragon of truthful virtue, you know, am I right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's interesting to think of which one of them might be lying in this case, mm. and which one, one of them would have had to tell the truth about that. So Exactly. That's, that's the mind blowing bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> I can go with your line and your line, but I can't go with, wait a minute, to which one? No, that doesn't make any sense to me. Right, Ugh. exactly. And then, you know, for that matter, Tucker Carlson, not the most honest fella either. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, him having that facial expression of uh, smelling some bad prawns. And I think that's an excellent description of what his face looked like. He's just always like, where is that coming from? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard of uh, shrimping, but uh, he's he's the guy that you would want to do it to. Have you heard of shrimping? Uh, no, please do tell. Uh, so there was this uh, comedian, Al Madrigal, who's very, very funny. And he tells this story about, um, you know, there was somebody that he was upset with. And to get back at them, uh, he got a bag of shrimp and made a little hole in the wall and put the bag of shrimp in there and then plastered it over. Uh, so you couldn't tell it was in there. And, you know, he said it's a great way to uh, to get your enemies because it, they're like, where where is the smell coming from? You know, and they're yeah. looking everywhere. Yeah. They're looking, you know, looking at all the things, calling calling people in, trying to figure out what it is. And it's in the wall. Uh, so, and no one would think to look there. So I, I have to say that I didn't realize it was called shrimping. I have heard of that. There is a story actually over here of a, of a possibly the most talented English footballer, but also, mm -hmm. shall we say, uh, um, a bit wayward when it comes to, you know, a bit erratic when it comes to his behaviour sometimes. A chap called mm -hmm. Paul Gascoigne, a problems okay. with the drink and stuff like that, but, but brilliant and pro pure genius. And there's another of his teammates called Ali McCoy that tells a, pro tells a story of the time that he and uh, Gascoigne were playing both playing for Rangers. And uh, Gascoigne comes in with a couple of uh, large things of fish, Mm -hmm. And uh, and um, Ali McCoy goes, what are you doing with those? He said, we're going to have a bit of fun. He said, who's been getting on your nerves? Uh, and he said, and I can't remember. He came up with this chap's name. Just say it's Mark Smith or something. It's Mark Smith. He goes, OK. And he got and because they're both they both of them weren't in training, they were taking the time off. They went into Mark Smith's trousers, took out his uh, keys to his car, opened up his car, took out those um, the uh spare tire from the boot yeah put the fish in put the spare tire back on and <laughs> Ali McCoy is about to put the other fish in and Paul Gascoigne goes no not there then the other fish he goes and puts it uh in uh, underneath the seat or something he says <laughs> when he works out what the first one is he, he'll think that that's it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he, is, he said so what happened was he said obviously um Mark Smith manages to gauge what it is fairly quickly. He takes the spare tire out, cleans out, cleans out, but still the smell is there. And he said he came to training one time. You know those, you know those um, uh, magic tree uh, smell smelling things. Do you have them yes, over there? Yes. Uh -huh, yeah. He said it was like a forest in his car. He's got them all <laughs> down the side. <laughs> Just made me chuckle. Just made me chuckle. That is diabolical. Oh, well, that is the end of the podcast. Thank you, everyone, for watching, um, and especially for watching all the way to this point. So well done. If you want to keep up with American politics, and why wouldn't you? Because let's be honest, there's a lot to keep up with. Then do subscribe to Andrew's channel. You're already here at the Phoenix News Network. Uh, and my channel for the UK staff is at theinterestingtimes.co.uk. And we'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye, guys.